Hello, this is Nitin Dahat with the Times, and I'm here in Bangalore or Bengaluru and uh, talking to Raghu Panikar, who is CEO of Kane Semicon. Hello, Raghu. Hi, Nitin. How are you? I'm fine. So, uh, Raghu, tell me a little bit about Kane's uh, Semicon and um, its role in the, in the whole sort of Indian se semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem. Yeah. So Kane's technology uh, is uh, you know, one of the oldest electronic manufacturing services company in India. Um, you know, they have been existent for the last 38 years. Uh, they have been doing products for automotive, railway, medical, hmm. telecom, servers and stuff for the last 38 years. And then you know, the growth that we have seen in the last three to four years, thankfully for the, for the automotive electric vehicle segment, uh, the company has been growing at the rate of 40% CAGR for the last uh, three years. Wow. And uh, we did a record uh, revenue closing last month. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell you a number, but then, you know, it's in a high digit of, uh, of 200 plus. Okay. And uh, we are now valued at uh, $2.2 billion. Hmm. Uh, thankfully to our share price, uh, you know, doing exceedingly well, we can't last much more. Your IPO in September, uh, sorry, no, 2022. November 2022. Yeah. And uh, with this uh, IPO and the valuation, it gives us a financial leverage. Hmm. If required, we can go to a market and raise money. That's what we did for you know, our uh, subsidiary company called Keynes Semiconductor and uh, Keynes Circuits for bareboard PCB. Keynes Semiconductor primarily would, is venturing into the outsource semiconductor assembly and test. Right. And these are the two items or two areas that we are going to focus in the next uh, three to five years. Right, yes. and. Um, uh, there have been lots of news reports about investment um, uh, over the last, uh, I think, last, uh, last, late last year, uh, and around I think 4,000 crore. I'm not sure that's in, in dollars, but uh, yeah, there's that investment for the, the semicon. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. So yes, uh, 4,000 crores is an investment that uh, you know Kane Semicon is uh, is making into semiconductor manufacturing. And uh, you know, in that investment, we we would be bringing in technology, primarily wire bond, the wire bond technology to you know to do packages like QFN, SOT, and TO. Okay. Uh, there would be technology that we would be venturing into doing BGA, friction BGA, and then advanced packaging in the silicon photonics domain. And that requires technology partners, that requires machines and equipment, and hence that kind of an investment. Got it. Got it. Um, we, we talk about India and the emergence of semiconductors and you know, because it's globally in the news because of all kinds of issues over the last few years around supply chain and where else apart from uh, one, one source. Um, but actually, uh, you gave me quite an interesting history uh, in our pre-conversation about uh, how you know, it all started around 83 uh, with, with one person but another person as well. Yeah, just give us a, a little bit of a, that potted history because yeah, people might think India is in semiconductors now, but it's been there for a while. It's always tough to, uh, you know, draw down the history of uh, 35, 40 years in in a couple of minutes, but I will yeah. still attempt to do that. Yeah. Uh, two gentlemen, which uh, which we owe in India, uh, to one is uh, uh, an Indian who came out of uh, TIFR, a gentleman named Dr. M. J. Zarabi. Yes, he was interested to put up semiconductor fab in India way back in 1980s. While he succeeded in putting a fab. Uh, the subsequent governments did not invest further to keep that fab running yeah. and modernize it and upgrade it. It is in a state at which is, it is now, and I'm sure the current government is looking to put that as a semiconductor research park with good amount of investment coming. So that's right. Dr. Zarabi's vision of setting that up uh, yeah. under the Department of Electronics. Around the same time, another gentleman named Dr. Wally Rines, who was the TI Semiconductor CEO, set up establishment in India in 1980 and then grew TI in India, Texas Instrument in India. So these two gentlemen are the people who, you know, drove semiconductor into India. And then, you know, the rest is history of, of we being the world's number one semiconductor design uh, centers in India. You name the top 25 semiconductor designs, all are present in India from a multinational standpoint. Yeah. The, the sad part is that all the IPs are designed in India. The IPs don't rest in India, the IPs go outside of India. I'm sure we should find a mechanism to see how these IPs could be registered, how could these IPs remain in India. But that's a different story yeah, altogether. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the last 30 years, there's been a dream run for semiconductor in India. So people who think about semiconductor has not happened in India. It's a, it's a, 
it's from a design been, point of view, I think uh, absolutely. it's been very strong, and I think it's emerged uh, uh, as a as a key hub. And you know, that's why you know Bangalore has uh, ended up being what sometimes people call Silicon Valley of India. Yeah. But um, I, I think um, in the, the government um, support for this has been stronger in the last few years, and I think there's like a 15 or 20 billion dollar investment now in the in the latest. Uh, you said uh, phase of, of investment of, of the and the India semiconductor mission. So I think that's ca kind of where now you come in to help grow that manufacturing. And you know, we'll talk about skills later, but yeah, that's, that's manufacturing. So the kind of uh, investment which uh, the government is doing in the semiconductor manufacturing, you know, even though we are a powerhouse in chip design, um, uh, the government felt that there should be a, uh, you know, we, to be self-sufficient. To to have an ecosystem where you know we are also one of the uh, one of the powerhouses, you know, gone past in the world earlier. If you if you if you own oil, you are termed to be the richest country. And now oil is the next uh, semiconductor is the next oil or electronics is the next oil. So every country is trying to become self-sufficient in semiconductor. Geopolitical situation is driving it. I'm not naming the country, but we all yes. know which country is driving yeah. all of us good or bad of it. So from that standpoint, India as a country has also felt that we need to have our own destiny in our own hand without giving it to somebody else. And hence, the semiconductor manufacturing is one thing which we, uh, India is bringing in. And semiconductor manufacturing could be silicon fab or the in the ecosystem, the OSAC. Both the things have been looked into in an equal way. And that's why you've seen an announcement of Tata coming up with a sil silicon fab, Tata coming with an OSAT, Keynes Semicon coming with an OSAT, and a few others which is which is going to fall the line. Mm -hmm. So that's the investment which is coming to India. Let's not leave aside the silicon carbide, yeah. which is a big story for our uh, EV and, and power and stuff like that. Yes. There are a few announcements that we will see uh, from the industry. We know a few names, but you know, let's wait for the government to announce a few silicon carbide fab as well. Right, and um, you're investing heavily into the next wave, which will be HPC, I guess. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that and um, where, where, what we can expect to see from Keynes. So, um, uh, you know, from, from you as a journalist, um, I know the quoting a number uh, becomes a headline. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes let's look beyond the number. Let's look at what market each are addressing. Um, you know, pretty much all of them are looking at power modules, power segment, which no doubt is a major. Uh, we are shifting a little. Uh, while power is important because we are big suppliers of uh, um, you know electronic modules or PCBAs to all the OLAs and ethers and stuff like that. While that would be one area that we'll focus on. The another two areas, one is the HPC, which is nothing but the data center, and that's where we have invested in the last one year. We are doing the high complex servers for CDAC. And taking out of it, we will do certain products for data center market in India. And that's another boom that we feel would happen. Hence, AI-enabled OSAT is something that we are investing. Hence, we are investing in a company called Mixtech, which is going to do products in the silicon photonics and the co-package optics. You know, waveguides and the silicon have to be intermingled. And you have a solution that will come out of it. And that's where Mixtech is going to work on here. Another area that we will put an effort is the VGA and friction VGA is for certain other application. And hence, we are looking at this market. A lot of disruption to happen in India, plus look at the export market. That's how right. we'll become self-sufficient in the next five years when the subsidy runs away and then the investment that we have to do by ourselves. Primarily, further to this is another challenge that we are all facing is the, is the ecosystem is the capacity building, is the, is the talent, hmm. is the manpower in this space, because that doesn't exist in India. Instead of sitting in Waini, we are looking at outside of India and looking within India. You know, we have partnered with a company called uh, Perceptive Solution to work on center of excellences around India. We've selected a few colleges, and I'm sure you will talk to the MD and find out more about it. I will, it. indeed. Uh, and, what, and, and, and coming back to the HPC, I think yeah, one of the big uh, announcements you're going to have is the C you've just made is with CDAC. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So um, CDAC, uh, we're looking to expand. Uh, CDAC, you know, by the sense of it, if you look at the servers that they do, do the all the high-end application, you know, weather forecasting, 
um, remote diagnostics, um, you know, earthquakes happening in India, and all that needs to be assessed or forewarned happening to be earlier. So they have got huge system. We have, we have read and heard about Param, Super Param, and those computers, right? Yes. Those high-end systems. So we in India would manufacture those called Rudra 1 and Rudra 2 right. in our manufacturing facility in Mysore. Okay. And that's a high complex servers that are going to manufacture. We've been awarded the contract and that was a big process, an audit. The CDAC guy is coming and doing a month long edit of our process, people, our expertise to run manufacturing line and all that. Now they've qualified us, they've awarded a contract. The kickoff has happened two weeks back. And uh, you know, in the next six months, we have to supply n number of systems to them. And I'm sure once we do that, effectively, we'll get more business and stuff like that. But that's manufacturing. We are, we are going further, as I told earlier, is to look at that as a market. A lot of data centers being set up in India. You know, with our local uh, multinationals, etc. if you look at Hero, if you look at Alliance, all are investing in data centers, which necessarily means that so much volume of HPC chips are needed, yeah. systems are needed, and that's the next thing that we are looking with Mixtech and Copacket, of course. Well, it all sounds very exciting, Roger. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nitin. Thanks for having me here.